has always worshipped the sun. It's perfectly logical too, as the warm ball of light and heat sitting high in the sky fuels life on this planet by producing the equivalent of about a trillion nuclear bombs per second, enough to power human civilization for 500,000 years every second. So why has China decided to build their very own artificial sun? The need. Cleaner, better, more. It's no secret, the world's stores of subterranean fossil fuel stores are running out. The industrial age has seen an explosion in the global human population. And those people all need food on the table, lights on in the house, and be able to get from A to B. Burning coal pumps 50 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. And in such a relatively short time in our existence, we have effectively altered the climate of our planet. It's no small thing. There is an increasingly urgent need for a cleaner alternative to conventional fossil fuel-based energy generation. Wind, solar, geothermal, hydro, tidal. All excellent methods to harness power from nature. But the yield just isn't there to replace current infrastructure and support the needs of the human race. The answer lies in the atom. E equals mc squared. It's an equation known by many but understood by few. Basically, energy equals mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. In layman's terms, there is an almost unfathomably large amount of energy contained within matter just waiting to be extracted. The history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Picture a golden god in all their blazing glory, dragging a fiery orb across the heavens from dawn until dusk. The sun rising and setting is a concept that amazed early man, and this description of a powerful solar deity tasked with ensuring the sun rises each new day could easily be from many religions around the globe. The Greek Helios, the Roman Apollo, the Norse Sol, the Hindu Surya. First, mankind wanted to split the atom. We succeeded, though arguably with mixed results. The tremendous amount of energy released can then either be harnessed or unleashed. On one hand, nuclear power stations supply over two dozen countries with electricity by turning water into steam, powering turbines with a process that splits a heavy uranium atom into smaller atoms called nuclear fission. On the other hand, the atomic boogeyman has haunted us on numerous occasions. Out of those two dozen countries who use enriched uranium as the fuel for steam turbines, nine have developed nuclear weapons. In fact, Russia and the USA account for 93% of the world's 15,000 strong armaments. Too many. Then there are the catastrophes, the meltdowns, that put the fear of God in mankind and make us question whether potentially rendering our planet too radioactive to inhabit is a worthy risk for, quote unquote, cleaner energy. These range in severity from mild to world changing. A cooling malfunction caused the molten core of the number two reactor at Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island released radioactive gas during 1979 in such a small amount that it didn't affect background radiation levels or harm nearby residents. A warning, but crisis averted. When an earthquake hit the Japanese Fukushima plant in 2011, external power was cut off to the cooling system designed to slow the nuclear reaction. The water from the subsequent 50-foot tsunami rendered the backup generators useless, overheating the uranium fuel and causing hydrogen explosions in three of the cores. Radioactive material leaked into the air, ground, and sea, with 100,000 people permanently displaced from their homes within the exclusion zone. Then there is the big one, the accident that still haunts us today, 1986 Chernobyl. Arrogant hubris, human error, and an inherent design fault push the reactor to its absolute limits and well past the threshold of failure. The core exploded, releasing 400 times more radioactive material into the atmosphere than the Hiroshima bomb, sending a toxic cloud of dust across Europe for 10 full days. To date, only 50 deaths are attributed to the worst nuclear disaster in human history. Out of the million-strong cleanup team, it's estimated around 15% have succumbed to terminal illness as a result of their exposure. The death rate, incidence of cancer, and number of birth defects in newborn children skyrocketed in the Ukraine and Russia, and remains over 30 years later. Millions of lives forever changed, with the compromised core of Chernobyl still eating through the concrete base of the power plant, 
making the area uninhabitable for at least the next 100 years. There has to be a better way than atomic fission, a process that creates terrible products that remain toxic for tens of thousands of years and radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years. The why. Isn't it obvious? The logical way forward is nuclear fusion. But first, let's take a minute to think about what energy is. In its most basic form, energy is storage and transfer. Let's use fossil fuels as an example. The storage part comes from the decomposed prehistoric plant and animal matter stored underground as fossil fuels. It's the same concept as the electrical potential within a battery. The transfer comes when those fossil fuels are burned to create electricity. The stored chemical energy in coal is changed to heat, which turns water into steam to power turbines. The kinetic energy moving the fins is then converted back into electricity by the relationship between magnetic and electric fields. The electrons flow through power lines into your home, where they are again changed into light and heat as you cook on a stovetop, sit at your computer, or turn on a light bulb. It's all energy, just stored in different forms and transformed into what you need it to be. The downside is pollution, greenhouse gases from fossil fuels and radioactive waste from nuclear fission. These two methods have the best output, but are the worst for our environment. Conversely, renewable green energy is fantastic for the health of the planet, but the yields are too small to sustain us. The sun is the key. The original producer of all the energy transferred via sunshine and then stored on Earth. By using neutron-heavy isotopes of hydrogen such as deuterium and tritium, the same nuclear fusion reaction occurring in the sun on a grand scale can be mimicked on a smaller scale. The smaller atoms can be forced together to create harmless helium, generating a huge amount of energy in the form of heat during the process. The what? Isn't it awesome? It's only been very recently that China have successfully powered up their fusion reactor affectionately known as the artificial sun for the first time. This is huge. The HL2M Takamak reactor is currently the world's largest and most advanced device used for experimental nuclear fusion, research that is crucial in unlocking both a powerful and clean burning energy source for the future. Playing God has become possible by way of a powerful magnetic field used to fuse and contain the hot plasma while withstanding temperature of up to 270 million degrees Fahrenheit. Not only could they house a mini sun in this field, but they could theoretically make a sun with a core 10 times hotter than our own. This plasma is an ionized gas that conducts electricity. Normally, the weak atomic force that prevents two atoms from combining into a larger atom is just too strong for fusion to occur naturally. The positively charged protons in each atomic nucleus repel each other in a similar way that you can force the north poles of a magnet together. In order for the phenomenon to occur, you need two things, high temperature and high pressure. In order to get the hydrogen isotopes excited enough to overcome their electrical repulsion, they need to be heated to 170 million degrees Fahrenheit, where they enter this higher plasma state and lose their electrons. The Sun achieves this due to its large mass and huge gravity compressing the core mass. Here on Earth, we use microwaves, lasers, and ion particles to achieve the same temperatures. Next up is pressure. As previously stated, the Sun is huge, and its gravitational force is enough to squeeze the hydrogen together to form helium. This is the tricky part, as we need to use extremely powerful magnetic fields to contain and condense the plasma to act as the catalyst to initiate the fusion reaction. The Chinese plan to use this otherworldly device in collaboration with the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor currently being constructed in France. When it's completed in 2025, it will become the new king of nuclear fusion, the biggest and most powerful in the world. The future, best of both worlds. Currently, this reactor uses double neutron deuterium to triple neutron tritium fusion reaction. Deuterium to deuterium fusion requires much higher temperatures and is seen as the holy grail of nuclear fusion for a very simple reason. It's easy to make. Deuterium can be very easily extracted from seawater, while tritium can only be bred from lithium, a notoriously finite resource. 
The end game is to produce renewable power from a controlled fusion reaction using nothing but seawater. The added benefit is that a pure deuterium fuel source increases energy yield. Generally speaking, one out of every 5,000 hydrogen atoms in seawater is deuterium. Theoretically, one gallon of seawater could produce as much energy as 300 gallons of gasoline. It's the best of both worlds, high electricity production without the massive detriment to the environment.